Good evening and welcome to Minster High School for tonight's matchup between the Coldwater Cavaliers and the Minster Wildcats. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. Josiah, tonight we got a good matchup, an early season conference matchup, and a lot of times when you get to the end of the year, you look back at some of those things that can decide conference championships. It's those early season week two, three, you know, game four type conference plays, and that's what we have here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, you know, big game here, especially each team wants to start 1-0 in the conference, set themselves up for a good start to the year. You know, both coaches still trying to figure out their teams, you know, seeing the lineups, moving people around. Um, but it should be a good matchup tonight. Both teams come in tonight one and one on the young season as the first three-point try is up and a good. As you see, number 10, Casey Albers come away with the first three points of the night. Take a look at the starting lineups for both teams, starting with the Minster Wildcats. Number three, Katie McClurg. Number 10, Casey Albers. Number 13, Morgan Sparks. Number 14, Lily Barhorst. And number 32, Addie Inskeep. As we have our first turnover of the night, a travel call against the Cavaliers. So the ball's going to go back to the Wildcats. Taking a look at the starting five for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Number four, Jenna Lugers. Number 15, Kelsey Seifring. Number 22, Becca Wenning. Number 23, Claire Steinke. And number 30, Riley Riss Miller. As you see, Riley getting <laughs> into things here early. You know, obviously, you know, going into every game with Coldwater. The big story is Riley Riss Miller and how you're going to defend the six foot five senior, the UD commit who was highly sought after by most Division One schools around the entire country. Um, ends up signing with the University of Dayton, but she is a big presence, and every team has to account for her. Yeah, absolutely. There's no secret what the uh, attack will be for this Coldwater team. You know, as Coach Mike Wiss mentioned, his keys for the game is they have to defend that high low with Riss Miller. For Coldwater, their offense runs around her, so it's important for them to maintain a way to keep her contained and keep her off of that low block, as you see here with the double, quick double for Minster. Um, but also, they know they got to shoot well. Coldwater likes to come out in that zone, especially with that length in the middle, and they want to know they got to shoot well from the outside, as you know they did on their first possession with that knockdown three from Casey Albers. So we have our first foul of the night. This one is going to go against Minster, and it goes against. Excuse me, number 14, Lily Barhorst. So inbounds comes to the Cavaliers. Almost lost the pass there as it looked like Seifring wasn't quite ready for it. The winning now works around with the right hand. Luger trying to find Riss Miller down low against the double team. And a double team is light work, most nice for Riss Miller. She sees triple teams, and we've even seen teams uh, try to throw four defenders against her. But right there, took it in easy, get it off the glass for two. Yeah, Minster tried to double her, but the double coming from Katie McClurg, who's probably the smallest player out there for Minster, and Riss Miller was just able to collect the ball and go for an easy bucket. Albers not able to connect on the three-point try. Cavaliers quickly in transition. Can't get it to go, but Lugers comes up with the rebound. This one's poked away on the floor as Morgan Sparks. Loose ball. McClurg's going to come up with it. So now here's Inkeep. Gets it over to McClurg. He's going to slow things down, let the offense get set. You see Coldwater out in the 2-3 zone. Going to try to keep things coming from in the middle. So Riss Miller's presence right there, a deterrent. As it, it looked like uh, Lily Barhorst wanted to shoot there from about the free throw line, but Riss Miller covers so much ground as she does right there coming out on ends keep, and the rebound comes down to the Cavaliers. Lugers working against Albers, gets rid of it. Riss Miller comes out behind the three-point line. She's more than capable of handling, handling the basketball as we have a fight for the loose ball just around half court. McClurg trying to fight for it. And we're going to have a jump ball. Nice hustle that time by Katie McClurg getting out there trying to tie her up. Didn't pick up the foul call that time. Possession arrow favors the Cavaliers, though. Well, we can see what Minster's trying to do early is double team that point guard. All right, make her make a quick decision so they can't get quickly into their offense. And it's been successful here. It's forcing Coldwater, you know, to, to kind of have some mishaps on the ball as we see another double team coming here. 
Minster's defense coming out, trying to trap, force some turnovers. Three-pointer by Lugris, good from the corner. Coldwater on top, 5-3. Jenna Lugris gets her first three points of the night. Here's another three-pointer on the opposite side. This one doesn't fall for Sparks. As Coldwater gets the rebound, but immediately gets some pressure. Able to get it up to Wenning. Wenning's going to drive. Kicks it down along the baseline, but we have a whistle first and another foul coming. Yeah, it's been a little shaky for Coldwater getting the ball up, but they found it in the last couple of possessions, finding a way to break this pressure. That person cutting to the middle, and then the, and Coldwater being able to attack quickly. So. Luger has another three-point try. Looked like this one might have been tipped. It comes up short. Going to be out of bounds. They're going to say a last touch by McClurg. As McClurg actually picked up the foul the last time as well. That was her first team second. And we have a couple of substitutions coming into the game. Number three, Emma May checks in for the first time, as does number 13, Mia Kanapke. Inbounds comes into wrist. Miller, Miller immediately double team. Now triple team gets it up over. Multiple defenders, she's gonna pick up the foul and make a trip to the free throw line. Well, that's what you wanna see from your post players. When they catch it in there, keep it high. When you see that double come, she was able to split it, get one bounce and go up and drew a lot of contact, an opportunity to knock down two from the free throw line. Chris Miller's first free throw is good. She now has three points on the night. That foul was called on Addie Inskeep, her first, team's third. As Riss Miller connects on the second. So 7-3 lead for Coldwater. Coldwater last year finished fifth in the conference. 5-5 five and five on the season. Minster 7-2 in conference play. Tied for second with several other teams as everybody was looking up to New Knoxville who went 9-0. So you know that both these teams like to be a little bit higher on those standings. As you saw, number 14, Lily Barhorse. She's been active here in the first quarter and finally gets her first two points. Chris Miller with the offensive rebound. Loose ball going against two different defenders. And we're going to have a jump ball call. Possession error is going to favor the Wildcats. Well, you can see the intensity early on as that ball gets down the ground. Three players diving after it. Don't want to give up any of those easy buckets, especially when Riley Rissmiller gets that ball in the paint. So a great job there by Katie McClure to help her teammate and get on that ball and force a jump ball and possession Minster. Albers finds McClure down in the corner. She goes baseline, gets rid of it, almost has it taken away. But then keep able to gather it in. Finds McClure. She can't connect. And that time... You saw Albers was down there, as was Barhorse. A little miscommunication ends up going out of bounds on Minster. As we have another substitution, number 23, Claire Steinke checks back in for Coldwater. She's going to have our first Minster substitution. Number 12, Lydia Mesher checks into the game. 3.29 left to go here in the opening quarter, two-point game. Coldwater's on top, 7-5. Here goes Wenning. Working with the right hand, waiting for, looked like she was waiting on a screen to come up top, but ends up getting rid of it. Three point shot, one more, this one short, fight for the rebound, gonna go out of bounds. As it looked like for a second, Mia was gonna be able to keep that one in, but touched out of bounds prior to that, so the ball's gonna go back to the Wildcats. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Meyer would like to see her team work the ball around a couple times, seeing if they can get the ball into Riley Wrist Miller. Seemed like that shot was a little bit rushed by the Coldwater teammate, but we'll see if that continues to be the strategy of Coldwater is to work the ball around the perimeter and wait till Wrist Miller can get some position down low. So Becca Wenning's going to pick up her foul teams first as she was working against number 22, Anna Larger, who had checked into the game. Our horse trying to find somebody ends up having this one taken away. Drive all the way in, nice kick out. Loose ball is going to end up in the hands of the Wildcats. They're going to try to move quickly. Larger finds McClure up into the front court. Here's Barhorse at the free throw line. We're going to work against Wrist Miller. Drew the attention of the other defender, but you saw 
Larger not able to connect on the shot. The rebound comes down to cold water. Lenning working against that pressure defense of Minsters. They've done a, a great job of getting back in transition, getting double teams, and not letting Coldwater have a lot of easy open looks. Going to have another foul call. No shot, says the official. And this one's going to go on Katie McClurg. That's going to be her second, team's fourth. So I would imagine that we will see Katie take a seat, and she is going to check out, as does Casey Albers. And uh, Lily Barhorse checks out of the game. As you see Eddie Inskeep come back in. Coldwater staff not too happy about that last call. Thought she was shooting on the play, but the officials call the sideline out of bounds. So Coldwater will retain possession here. Here's Emma May. Emma loses the basketball, ends up back in it. Fight with Inskeep. On the ground. And we're going to have a timeout by Minster so they can maintain the possession. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll take the timeout as well, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight's scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Taking a look at the Wabash Mutual scoreboard. Coldwater's on top, 7-5, to five, a minute 38 left to go here in the opening quarter. Minster took a timeout to make sure they didn't lose that possession on a loose ball on the floor. Ended up just being a 30-second timeout, so just a quick talk. And we'll see what they come up with coming out of this timeout. Opportunity here for Minster as Riley Rissmiller is taking a little breather as they turn the ball over on that possession. I'm sure that wasn't what Coach Mike was, was uh, drawing up there. So now Coldwater looking to extend their lead. Claire Steinke gets all the way around but can't get that one to fall. Almost has it taken away. As Lydia Mesher Pass almost picked off, but Minster able to maintain this possession. It's going to get kicked out of bounds, so it'll stay with the Wildcats. And that break for Riley did not last long as her and Becca Wenning checking back into the game. You see Lily Barhorse come back into the game as well for Minster. Now we were talking prior to the game, when you look up and down this Minster lineup, they have size. You know, usually they are not going to be the smaller team when they hit the floor. But when you're going up against Riley, it is hard to find anybody who can match up with her. You know, they have uh, three different girls, I believe, on the roster that's 5'10 or taller, uh, does Minster. And when they're still out there, they are still the small team. Yeah, that's one thing you can't coach is size. And uh, with Riley Rissmiller, you got a lot of size to deal with especially in this zone. Um, and it's not the traditional 2-3 zone. It's kind of a matchup zone um, that Coldwater stays in. So, But using that length, she can close a lot of ground quickly. And a great pass there and a great rebound by number 14, Lily Barhorse. Lily Barhorse does a great job in the paint. Went up high to take that rebound away from Rissmiller. And now here's Minster on the turnover. 28 seconds left to go. Barhorse, she's going to take it herself. Tries to squeeze it into a tight window. Ends up going out of bounds. Last touch by the Cavaliers. So with 22.6 seconds left to go, Minster maintains this possession. Long inbounds. Comes out to Larger. Barhorse right in the middle of that zone. She's going to attack. Pull up jumper. That one's a little bit long. Riss Miller comes up with the rebound, and immediately Innskeep comes up to tie her up. And you can tell that the strategy tonight is the moment that any of these loose balls, whether it's Riss Miller or anybody else, Minster is attacking, trying to tie them up. Well, I think we see Coach Mike Weiss 
you know, he's got a little bit deeper of a bench than this Coldwater team. So he's really, he's willing to, to sub in a lot of girls. They want to keep the intensity up. As we see here, they're continuing on that full court pressure, making it very difficult for Coldwater to get the ball past half court. But he's willing to use that deep bench to his advantage tonight and telling his girls to get after it on the defensive end. Five seconds left to go. Coldwater's going to have to hurry. They want to get a look. Chris Miller's going to shoot the three, and this one's going to be no good. So that brings the first quarter to a close, and after one, we are all tied up at seven. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Second quarter underway. Taking a look at the Wabash Mutual scoreboard, we are all tied up as Coldwater unable to connect on their last possession of that first quarter, but they start the second quarter with the basketball. Some miscommunication that time, so we're going to have a turnover on the Cavaliers. Only the third turnover of the night here for Coldwater is, you know, was really scrappy there in that first half. A lot of players on the ground fighting for those loose balls, but not a whole lot of turnovers as teams were able to maintain possession there. And a good take here for Minster. Great ball movement by Minster to get that on the inside, but not able to finish. As the rebound comes down to Coldwater, they're going to try to run the floor. Steinke had to pull that one back. Wenning couldn't handle the pass. It's going to be a fight for the loose ball. Wenning comes up with it, gets it to Steinke. Wrist Miller back out to Steinke. She's going to drive, but... We are going to have a travel before then. As we saw Steinke get going a little bit too soon that time. So it will be interesting to see if Minster keeps up this pressure because as it was effective, but, you know, Katie McClurg back out on the floor with two fouls. Addie Inkeep, Inkeep excuse me, she's on the bench with two fouls. So the, and they have five team fouls already. So they did start to add up a little bit there in the first quarter. They are deep on their bench. They're not afraid to use everybody sitting over there. As you see a three-pointer on its way as Casey Albers has her second three-point shot of the game. And now Minster is on top, 10-7. to seven. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, as you said, if they can keep this up. You know, but you'd like to see it turn into some offense. And so far tonight, they haven't been able to force a whole lot of turnovers that led to a lot of offense and a good take there by number 23, Claire Steinke. So Steinke is able to get on the board for the first time tonight. Puts your team within one. McClure shot. That one's going to be off. Barhorse not able to bring in the rebound. Ends up into the hands of Becca Wenning. Chris Miller now trying to get the offense moving. Drops it down to Jenna Lugers. Right now, Coldwater a little stagnant on offense. Not a lot of movement. And Coldwater now, they want to talk about it as well. This is going to be a full timeout. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Coming out of the timeout, Becca Wenning gets a nice look at the basket but can't get that one to go down. Long pass, Albers right behind the three-point line. She has this one poked away. Loose ball picked up by Jenna Lugers. And it looks like Minster gets a little bit too impatient on the offensive end. They see some spacing as a great pass there on the end, and both teams really struggling around the basket to put the ball in the hole. You know, we had talked about this pressure from Minster's defense, but if you want to try to get them to kind of back off and give you a little bit of space, that's how you do it right there. Claire Steinke did a great job of slipping through wide open down the lane, not able to make the shot, but if they keep getting looks like that, Minster's not going to have any choice. They're not going to be able to attack as aggressive as they are right now. Clerk working around half court line. Nice defense, ends up being able to get rid of it. Three-point shot on its way, rattles around and down for Morgan Sparks. And she gets her first three points of the night. Inbound pass is stolen as the full court press of Minster continues to give Coldwater problems. Albers 
That shot's no good. But there's Barhorst again with a big rebound right into the body of Riley. Can't get it to go down. And we saw Riss Willer that time, or Riss Miller, excuse me, fight for it, pull it down, and I believe we're going to have another foul. This one's going to go on number 24, Kayla Lamb, her first, and that is the team's sixth foul. Well, those are the type of boards you get excited about as a coach. You saw her go up, 6'5 you know, body. As you said, D1 recruit goes up and really rips that ball away. And a great defense there by Katie McClure to force a turnover. Number six on the night for Coldwater. As you see Jenna Lugers come back into the game. And Coldwater just continuing to struggle with that full court press from Minster. Doing an excellent job. As you see Riss Miller take a seat with 4.40 left to go here in the half. And Minster on top, 13 to nine. Good ball movement. Another loose ball on the ground. Another jump ball is, this possession error is gonna favor Cole, or a Minster, excuse me. And I'll tell you what, I am incredibly impressed with Lily Barhorst and how she's playing. She is so aggressive. She's been going after all these loose balls. She, she commands the presence in the middle. She has no fear going in there, going up against two, three different. She knows contact's coming. She has played a great first half. Yeah, absolutely. Very athletic, you know, really good around the basket. You know, as you said, really fearless and a great take there by Katie McClurg. But, yeah, going back to Barhurst, just really fearless. Going against 6'5", Riley Rissmiller, and she's not scared at all. Going up and getting boards and helping her teammates continue this lead. McClurg gets this one up ahead. And we're going to have an and one, I believe. I had looked down, I came up. No, it's going to be. We did have a foul, though. As it looked like Claire Steinke is going to get whistled for her first foul. And the foul was on the floor before the shot. As Russ Miller is going to check back in. So McClurk takes the inbound, lobs it in. Nice block by Becca Wenning that time. And we're going to have another foul. This one is going to go against Minster. And this is going to be their 17th foul. So we will take a trip to the other side of the floor as Kennedy Corte gets called for that foul. And that's her first. And Riley Rissmiller is going to be shooting one and one. And Riley steps to the line, uh, going two for two tonight already. And as you said, uh, this is where some of, the, some of that aggressiveness can come back and hurt you a little bit. You know, four minutes to go. Coldwater in the one and one, so they'll be shooting a free throw from now on. Chris Miller's able to connect on both free throws. She has six points on the night, and the lead is down to four. Minster continue to do great ball movement to try to try to slip some things into that zone defense, but they lose it that time. Winning. Long pass, Riss Miller ends up with it. Good drop step, and she gets it in for two. 15-13 now, Minster only up two. Albers out to Cortez, long pass, down into the corner. Now Minster's gonna slow things down as McClure finds Albers right around the free throw line. Nice cut, and Jenna Lugers is gonna get whistled for the foul, and she got Kayla Lamb, who had made a nice job cutting through that defense. You know, we talked about the pressure defense of Minster, but their offense, they're doing an excellent job of moving the basketball, going against that zone of cold water. They never stop, they're moving through, the ball never stops, and that's what's given them some pretty good looks tonight. As you see Kayla Lamb make her first free throw of the night. Well, it's really the first time tonight they really got behind Riss Miller, you know, with that size. She's done a really good job of controlling that middle. You know, Minster's really moved the ball from side to side, um, but she's controlled that middle. But that time she had to step up, allowing Lamb to sneak behind her, draw a foul, and miss the second free throw. So one for two from the free throw line. Long lob up to Riss Miller, not able to gather that one in. Three twenty left to go here in the first half. Morgan Sparks 
Has her pass knocked away by Wedding, but Corte comes out of nowhere to take it, but a little too aggressive. We saw the push off with the right hand, and the official right there to call the offensive foul. You see Minster, they are fired up tonight. I love it. I love the competition. I mean, it may only be game three, but they know how important these conference matchups are. Yeah, each team wants to come out. You know, this is a big game to kind of set yourself up for the season, especially in the MAC, because it's so competitive every single night. No matter who you play, it's going to be a battle. So each team's kind of, you know, really getting after it as Riss Miller misses that shot. She gets Prowser for another one, goes up, and it goes down. Well, Riss Miller now with six points in the quarter. This is down to a one-point game. Minster on top, 16-15, 2.40 left to go here in the first half. Corte, jump shot's gonna be off. And that's great hustle by Lamb. And just a little bit of a mental mistake by Claire Steinke that time. She reached out to kind of knock that one back. It goes out of bounds, so the basketball is gonna stay with Minster. Well, we're starting to see Risma get a little fired up here. Last three or four possessions, you see her running straight to the front of the basket. Four points here, quick, quick four points. Had an opportunity, the possession before it was, ended up in a turnover, but she's starting to control on the offensive end, control that paint for this Coldwater team. McClure able to get that basketball out to Bar Horse to reset. As you see the Coldwater defense coming alive, making a turnover. Here goes Wenning all the way with the right hand off the glass. And Coldwater finds themselves back on top, 17-16, two minutes left to go in the half. Well, a quick little run here by this Coldwater team. A couple turnovers. You know, with this Coldwater team, they are sitting back in this zone, but they're forcing that pressure up high, making those passes a little bit more difficult for this Minster team. And Minster's turned the ball over the last couple possessions. And they've had their most success when they can slow Minster down and they haven't been able to move the ball as quickly as you saw almost another turnover on that last pass. And here they are one more time. Wenning got her hand in there, knocked it away. This one picked off by Barhorse. Barhorse gets it over to McClure. Barhorse down in the middle but pulls it back out. And Albers wanted that ball down on the wing. She already has two three-pointers. Thought she had another one lined up. Barhorse goes right at Riss Miller. Can't get it to fall, but she's going to go to the free throw line, and Riss Miller is going to pick up her first foul of the night. Yeah, Barhorse once again being aggressive, catching that ball in the high post, squaring it up, attacking Riley Riss Miller, drawing some contact on the arm, an opportunity here to tie the game up. So this is the first one. Number for the Cavaliers, Morgan Sparks and Anna Laundry. See Riss Miller having a seat. Wouldn't be surprised to see her stay down here for the rest of this half as long as nothing crazy happens in the last 122, not wanting her to pick up her second foul. As Barhorse second free throw is no good. Steinke goes up for the rebound. And here comes Coldwater. Steinke gets through the trap, gets it down to Lugers. As right now you can see Mincer not concerned about the middle with Riss Miller out. They've been able to come up top, but a three-point shot is made by Emma May. Big three-pointer for the Cavaliers. Under a minute left to go. Coldwater on top, 20 to 16. Barhorse right around the free throw line, kicks it back out to McClurk. Clerk took a step to her right. Got Wenning off her feet, but decided to drop it back off. Here goes Larger. Larger can't connect, but Barhorse with another big rebound and put back. Oh. Lily Barhorse with six points on the night. Yeah, Barhorse doing everything she can to keep this Mr. team in it as another turnover by Coldwater. Larger did a great job that time of reading that pass, stepping in to pick it up. Here goes Barhorse in the middle. Larger. Shot on its way and good. Kayla Lamb with two points. And we are tied at 20. Three seconds left to go. Coldwater tried to get off a shot, but Wenning couldn't get a clean look at it. 
And that's going to bring a, the first half to a close. An entertaining first half as these teams have really gone after each other on both the offense and defensive end. But after two quarters, we are all tied at 20. We'll step aside and be back with third quarter action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Second half just underway. Coldwater is going to have the opening possession here in the third quarter. You can see them coming out and still wanting to put pressure. That defense caused some issues for the Cavaliers in the first half towards the second quarter as Vincer started to get into foul trouble. Coldwater found a little bit more room and was able to get up by as many as four. And then a little run there late in the second quarter. Closed the gap and Smith was able to tie it up. And that's where we stand tied at 20 here to open up the third quarter. And there was another turnover by the Cavaliers. Albers pushes it up to McClurg. McClurg to Barhorse. Barhorse down low to Wrist Miller. Wrist Miller with the rejection. Yeah, Wrist Miller with that size was able to swap that ball away from Lily Barhorst, and we saw a really good first half from Lily Barhorst being aggressive, you know, getting some great offensive rebounds, putting the ball back up. Um, but towards the end of that second half, we really saw Riss Miller kind of come on six quick points there in that second quarter where she got an offensive rebound. Um, she was able to attack the rim um, very quickly and it allowed her team to get back in and take the lead for much of the second quarter. As Abby is keep. Does a nice job of trailing her teammate, picks up the offensive rebound, gets the two points, and she's going to take a trip to the free throw line. We saw that in the first half as well as Minster or Coldwater. We get themselves into a little bit of trouble in those long, slow passes. Minster was doing a great job of reading, being able to get a couple of runouts, as we saw right there. And one opportunity is good as Annie Inskeep has her first three points of the night. And Minster is back on top, score of 23 to 20. All right, we'll see if Minster continues to that pressure of waiting for that point guard to get it across half court and bring that double. We didn't see it on that last possession, so that might be one of those, uh, you know, adjustments made at halftime to maybe just force this Coldwater team to make those long passes to see if they can get in passing lanes. So an early foul here in the third quarter as Morgan Sparks picks up her first of the night. Here's McClurg for three from the corner. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Albers. Albers with the putback. That one's going to bounce off twice. It's going to fall down. Steinke tries to track it down in the corner, and she's able to. Jenna Luger is trying to push the offense now. Going to get into the paint. Has to pick it up. Comes up against the trap. Able to get rid of it. Kelsey Seafgreen that time was trying to get it down low, looking for winning. And we're going to have a substitution as MMA is going to come in. We started this uh, quarter the same as we started the game with McClurg, Albert, Sparks, Barhorse, and Inskeep for Minster. And Luger, Seafgreen, Wenning, Steinke, and Wristmiller for Coldwater. As Wenning takes a three-point shot. And Becca Wenning makes a big three. And the net gets stuck one more time. This time it's Barhorse who goes up and fixes the net. Rebecca Wenning, big three. That's her fifth point of the night. We're all tied up at 23. And we've seen that a couple times tonight where it looks like Minster started to gain that momentum. You know, they, they've got a couple good possessions, and then Coldwater knocks down a big three to kind of cut that lead, and as we saw, to, to even it out here. But a good take in there now by Lily Barhorst to, to go to the line where she's over 2 on the night. Foul's going to be called on Claire Steinke. That's her second team's first of the half. Barhorst free throw. In and out. Our horse lines up her second shot. It's on its way. And this one's no good as well. Rebound come down to Steinke. Oh. 
Lenny working against Barnes, has to get rid of it. As May had this one taken away by Albers. Quick hands by Emma, or excuse me, by Casey Albers that time. And we're going to have a tie up. The possession arrow is favoring Minster. Casey Albers on the inbounds. Gets it to McClure. McClure back to Albers. Right around the free throw line. Working against Chris Miller. Long pass. Jenna Luger did a great job of reading it. Able to pick it up. And Morgan Sparks is going to pick up the foul. That's her second. And that's going to be the team's second. That's kind of what we saw in that first half. Uh, you, know, you see the aggressiveness of the Minster defense, and that led to some foul trouble. And here in the early going, a couple of fouls already. Well, both teams kind of waiting on the same thing, slowing each other down and waiting on those long balls as we see Minster make that long, slow pass. And the cold water defender was able to step in and take it and draw the contact here. So both teams kind of playing the same defensively as just make the team pass it around the, the three-point line. And a shot there and great rebound by Riss Miller. I'll tell you what, Billy Barhorst is putting in some work down low. She was able to move Riss Miller off her spot that time. Riss Miller used the height to get the rebound. Came all the way around, though, but Barhorse was right on her to force that shot to go off the side of the rim. And when it was all said and done, Mincer ends up with the possession. McClure for three. This one's no good. Riss Miller came across, lost her footing, ends up on the floor. She pops back up as Coldwater comes up with the rebound. Wenning working against Sparks. Has to get rid of it. Luger's trying to find Riss Miller down low. Riss Miller. She just continues to not have a lot of space down there as Barhorst has given her everything she can handle. But we're going to have a timeout on the floor as Coldwater wants to take a timeout. Just a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stover. You know, we talked about it in the game and a couple times there in that first half, but, you know, it, it's kind of, especially for two teams who feel like they could be in the hunt for a conference championship. You know, New Knoxville had some graduations. You know, you got to think that there's a lot of teams who feel like they can fill, fill that void. Kind of hard to overstate how important these early season conference matchups are. But then you throw on top, this is game three. You're still trying to figure a lot of things out about your team and what could you know, potentially be a game that you have to win if you think you're going to stay in that conference race. Yeah, absolutely, no. And, and you like to have these games early as a coach because you, you want to see the grit. You know, from your players, you want to see them make adjustments. You know, they want to play against quality competition, and we're seeing it here tonight as we're even at 23. Um, you know, having to figure out, make some adjustments, you know, on the fly. You learn a lot about your team when you're playing against really good competition, and, you know, both teams are kind of, coaches are probably evaluating their players and seeing, you know, these are the type of adjustments. They, this player handles this in this situation. So it's really good to see it, you know, early on in the year, especially in a big conference game. So that shot's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Minster. Albers working around the wing. Gets it up to Sparks. Gets it over to the top of the key. As you see McClurk put it on the floor. Pulls up from the free throw line. Gets the extra bounce. And that one is good as Katie McClurk has her fourth point. 25-23. 3.50 left to go. Here in the third quarter. There's a little bit of trouble in the backcourt for the Cavaliers. But they get it up as Becca Wenning works against Sparks. Here's Riss Miller, eye off the glass. Yeah, what a great pass by Riss Miller's teammates. You know, threw it and really put the defender uh, in a bad position and was able to put it up and get an easy bucket. And on the other end, Lily Barhorse. What a night she's had tonight. And at, at that basket by Lily Barhorse. We have another timeout on the floor. This one is going to be full, so we will step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. 316 left to go here in the third quarter. And Minster's on top of Coldwater 27-25. Took a little bit to get going here in the third quarter, but the offensive have woken up. I have to get rid of it. Wenning able to gather it in as that pressure from Minster just continues to keep coming. Emma May with the long three-point shot. That's no good. Jenna Lugas does a great job of getting that rebound. And we're going to have another tie up on the floor. Possession arrow is going to favor Coldwater, so they'll keep the ball. As Riss Miller has continued her trend of breaks are short, she is back into this game already. Looks like the officials are a little confused here. Should be cold water ball on the jump ball. And they were able to correct it. The winning on the inbound. Ryan Stack, he gets it to Riss Miller. Riss Miller goes to work against Barhorse. Barhorse went up. And you can see Barhorse not happy with that call. Thought she got all ball. But in the end, the officials say foul. So Riss Miller is going to go to the free throw line, where so far tonight she is a perfect four for four. Well, that's the type of take you like to see from your 6'5 post player. A little double move. Will bounce to the middle, spin back over her right shoulder to the left and drew some contact and opportunity here to cut into this Minster lead. Second free throw is good. So one for two from the line on this trip. And we are back to a one point game. Nice move by LeClure. She gets it back, kicks it back over. And one opportunity by Albers. Great shot, great effort. Gets the shot off and now has an opportunity for a three-point play. Yeah, Albers has hit some big shots tonight. Prior to that one, two big threes early on. And now an opportunity for an old-fashioned three-point play. Albers able to knock down the free throw. Make this a four-point game, 30 to 26. Have another turnover, Minster. And then they quickly turn it back over to Lugers as McClure is going to pick up her third foul. Two sixteen left to go here in the third quarter. Coldwater with the inbound. Uh, Minster switching up their defense here, going to a 1-3-1. One, one. Got another turnover there. Those long bounce passes oh. caused Coldwater some issues tonight. It led to quite a few turnovers. There was another one. And then Jenna Luger oh, just got a little too aggressive on that one. Tried to get her hand in there. She's going to pick up her second foul. Both teams with four team fouls here in the half. As we continue with the substitutions. Barger was trying to get Albers a little bit of miscommunication, but Albers able to gather that one back in. Here's Sparks. He gets a download to Innskeep. And the double team come over, so she finds Lam Lam with a great up and under. Gets that one to go for two. Yeah, Lamb's come in. Hasn't played a whole lot of minutes tonight, but when she's come in, it's really been instant offense. Hit some big buckets for this Minster team and was able on the back side to take the ball and do a little up and under for a two. And pass is taken away by Minster. Another turnover for the Cavaliers. Albers gets to the middle, kicks it back out. Vargas finds Lamb, but she loses the handle. You see Riss Miller come up with the loose ball. 
A minute five left to go here in the quarter. Six point lead for the Wildcats. Coldwater with the ball though. Wenning, nice pass down low to May. As this one gets knocked as Inski does a great job of getting her hand on that one and knock it out of bounds off of Wenning's foot. Yeah, Coldwater struggling last four possessions, four turnovers. So struggling to kind of cope with this pressure from Minster. Under a minute left to go. And we'll see if Minster wants to try to hold for the last shot. Ends keep. Feeds through the middle. Lamb kicks it back out. Alvarez on the drive. And now Minster pulls it back out. Gets the offense reset. Alvarez with the hesitation. Got it down into the corner. Albers, great find for Lamb, and she can't finish. Chris Miller comes up with the rebound. Ten seconds left to go. Lugers trying to get it down, see if they can't get a good shot off here before the end of the quarter. She picked up her dribble and had it taken away by Albers. Three seconds. Albers puts all the way in off the glass and can't get it to go. So fast and furious action there to end the third quarter. And after three, Minster's on top, 32-26. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stover, fourth quarter just about underway here at Minster High School as Minster's on top, 32-26. As you saw the pressure from the Minster Wildcats really caused Coldwater a lot of problems there in the third quarter. Yeah, turnover here by the Wildcats. Uh, great block there by Inky. Chris Miller trailing, doing a nice job of gathering that in. And she now has 15 on the night. That's what Coldwater's got to do. They're going to have to try to steal a couple of possessions here. That three-pointer looked like it was about halfway down before it came back out. Jenna Lugers now down into the corner to Seifring. Nice drive, but she loses the handle. McClure comes up with it, passes it up ahead. Sparks able to track it back down. And here's Barhorse. Barhorse working against Riss Miller. Riss Miller's going to pick up her second foul. Another strong take there by Lily Barhorst as you know, when she has gotten down there, she no fear going against Riss Miller. And Riss Miller just got a little bit over aggressive, put her hands down a little bit, and the official saw it and picked up her second. Barhorst, the only, about, the only thing tonight that hasn't worked for her is the free throw line. She continues to struggle, not able to make the first one. She's going to line up her second shot. Eight points on the ninth for Lily Barhorst. Able to get that one to go down. 33-28, five-point game. Luger's almost threw that one away, but Steinke able to grab, gather that one in. Here's Winning. Over to Ritz Miller. Ritz Miller with the jumper for two. Well, not to sound obvious, when Coldwater's had a really good stretch of offense, it's been in Riss Miller's hands. If they can get it to her, especially on the post, work the ball around, find her on the post, a lot of good things have happened. This one gets thrown out by Hemelgard. As you see Casey Albers come back into the game. So big possession for Coldwater, as we saw, as you mentioned, Four straight possessions with turnovers for the Cavaliers, but the last couple have been productive. Here's Wenning. She had a wide open lane going in, not able to connect, though. As you see McClure come up with the rebound. Barhorse left all alone out there. Decides not to take the shot. Gets it back out to Albers. Here's Inskeep. She gets the shot up and good. 
Back out to a five point lead. A good rotation there between Innskeep and Barhorst as Barhorst left the paint on her diagonal cut. Innskeep came behind her and caught it and squared up and knocked down the big two for this Wildcats team. So we had an official's whistle and they said it was a kick ball on the entry pass to Riss Miller. So Coldwater's going to get the basketball on the sideline. Pass comes in to Steinke, back out to Lugers. Here's Steinke, goes baseline. Tries to go up, and I think she got bailed out there by Albers. Steinke looked like she was pretty far under that basket, but when she went up, um, Albers was right there, and she's going to pick up her first foul. As Minster has done a much better job here in the second half with fouls, we saw him pick up a couple of quick ones. Um, to start start that third quarter, but since then they've really settled down. Only five team fouls here in the second half as Claire Steinke makes her first free throw. Well, this game could come down to free throws as we look at for this Coldwater team, six for seven on the night. Opportunity here to go seven of eight. As Steinke gets that one to go as well. Claire Steinke now four points on the night. And we are back to just a three-point game. Lamb left all alone underneath. Steinke though does a nice job recovering. And there's Barhorst one more time getting that one to go. Yeah, good pass. A great pass there by Minster to find Barhorst on the backside of the paint. She was able to go up strong as she's done multiple times tonight. Not afraid of the size of Coldwater. Another turnover here from the Cavaliers. This one's going to end up out of bounds. It's going to stay with Minster, though, as Coldwater, they just all night long just seem to kind of be telegraphing those passes. You know, they, they know where they want to go with it, but they haven't been able to look that defense off. And that time you saw it once again as Minster was able to jump it. And the shot goes. We've seen NC now with two big shots. And now they push their lead out to seven. Under five left to go in the game. And Coach Meyer wants to take a timeout and talk about it if she's not happy with the output of her team. Are you out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world at any time. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. 4.48 left to go here in the game. And, you know, I don't know that it's, I mean, I, at least it's what it looks like is Coldwater has to find some way to protect this basketball. And, you know, it's no secret. As Riss Miller goes, this team goes. they got to protect the ball, and you would think that they've got to make a little bit more of a conscious effort to get her that ball down low. Well, and you think, you know, the strategy for this Minster team all night was to really pressure those guards so they can't throw the ball easily into Riss Miller. And Minster's done a great job, you know, sometimes a little bit over-aggressive, you know, over the night, but they've done a really good job of putting the pressure, as they do right now, on these guards, and, you know, then they can't find Riss Miller. Nice find on the inside. And you see number 13, Mia Knapke, with her first two points. And that was a big spot to come up with them. Yeah, big play out of that timeout for this Cavaliers team. And, you know, they got to get a couple stops here to get back into this game. You know, force Minster to take some long shots, some difficult shots, and see if they can get the board and, and attack on the other end. Here's Barhorse, works with the right hand back into the lane. Kicks it back out, Albers for three. She's had a couple of those tonight. That one's no good. Riss Miller going to get Barhorse for the rebound. Can't pull it down. Ended up in the hand of a Minster Wildcat. And on the putback, as you see, it was Kayla Lamb. And she now has seven points on the night. Yeah, Kayla's, like I said, not played a ton of minutes. But when she's come in, she's been a lot of instant office offense for this Minster Wildcat team has you know, just been in the right place tonight to either get a rebound or to be on the backside post, all right, lose her defender, and she's done a really good job tonight. 
Claire Steinke tries for the shot, can't get that one to go as Coldwater once again has to rush a shot because of the pressure from the Minster defense. Well, Minster should be in no rush here. Up seven points with 3.14 to go. Just need to take care of the ball. We'll see if they decide to run some of this time off this clock here. Chris Miller able to come up with another rejection. Lenning gets it over to Emma May. May was trying to find Chris Miller, but Chris Miller wasn't ready for the pass, so another turnover. Sparks. Yeah, quite a few Cavaliers converge on her. So now she gets it back out behind the three-point line and misses everything on that shot. Going to go out of bounds and back to cold water as we have some more substitutions coming in. As you see Katie McClure come in. Kelsey Seifert coming into the game, as does Jenna Lugers. So 2.44 left to go here in the game. Seven-point difference. Minster on top, 41-34. A bit of a hesitation, stop and go that time by Lugers. Just couldn't shake the defenders, able to get rid of it. Rissmiller steps out for three as Riley Rissmiller has done all of her work on the inside. Goes behind the arc on that one and makes a big three-point shot. So we're going to have a timeout as Minster wants to talk about it. It's a full timeout, so we will step aside as well, and we will be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And it is coming down to the wire here at Minster High School. A big shot by Riley Rissmiller to give her 20 on the night. Makes this just a four-point game with under 2.30 left to go. Well, just to look at the free throws, you said a close game. Games like this could easily come down to a free throw as Coldwater forces a 10-second call here. But if you look at the night, Coldwater, 7 for 8 from the free throw line. Minster, 4 for 10. Luger finds Rissmiller going to the basket. Can't get that one to go down. A rare miss at the basket for Riley Rissmiller. And that was a big miss for the Cavaliers. And forced the 10-second violation on McClurg and almost was able to cash that one in. But now Minster, you would think, not going to be in any hurry to get this basketball up as the clock is on their side. Coldwater with still one foul to give. And you mentioned the free throw trouble that they've had. But might not be too afraid to put them at the free throw line. As loose ball hit the floor that time, but came back up as McClure was trying to find a cutting Albers. But Steinke did a great job of stepping in and taking that pass up. And another shot. Morgan Sparks, oh, excuse me, Mia Kanapke, she has had four points in the quarter, and they have been huge for her team. And now Minster wants to take a, another timeout. Is this one going to be a full or a 30? And it is a full timeout. So we will take the break as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And as we take a look at the Wabash Mutual scoreboard, we have just a two-point game with a minute 28 left to go. Coldwater has done a nice job the last couple of possessions, forcing turnovers out of the Minster Wildcats. And we'll see what they were able to draw up here in the timeout. And is going to get called for the foul. That is one of the few uh, players on the floor without a foul tonight. And Seafrian just picked up her first. It's team six, so on the next foul, they'll be sending somebody to the free throw line. Sparks takes the inbound. Finds in keep right around the free throw line. She kicks out behind the arc. And now you can tell as Larger that time had no intention of shooting that basketball. Minster is just going to try to bleed some clock. And Seafrain's going to get called for another foul, her second. And we're going to take a trip to the free throw line for a one and one. Well, as I mentioned before that timeout, you know, 
might be good to get even more aggressive on this cold water team because Minster hasn't shot very well from the free throw line tonight. Only four for ten. So maybe an opportunity, a good strategy to get a couple fouls here as Morgan Sparks knocks down this first one to extend the lead. This is Morgan's first trip to the free throw line tonight as we have another substitution. Mia Kanapke checks into the game. So still a one possession game. Sparks is able to connect on this one. We push it out to two. Big free throw coming up. And she does connect. Four point lead, two possession game. Under a minute left to play here. Good defense by the Wildcats. They force another turnover. Ball gets knocked away, but Sparks able to gather it back in, and they're going to have to foul. So 40 seconds left to go. At some point, Coldwater here's got to make a decision. Loose balls on the ground. 30 seconds left to go. Surprise, Coldwater hasn't fouled yet, and finally they do as Mia Kanapke picks up the foul, but a lot of time went off the clock. Yeah, you can see the Coldwater staff yelling at their players to, to foul earlier. Minster able to take a good 15 to 20 seconds off of that clock just by dribbling the ball around. So McClure not able to connect. Loose ball, gonna go out of bounds. Last touch by Minster. So that possession works out for the Cavaliers. But they're gonna have to face this pressure from the Mr. Wildcat defense. And Coldwater see if they can get something going to the rim as this is another turnover. And Wenning wasn't able to gather the inbounds in. And Riley Rissmiller has to reach in, picks up her third foul. And unofficially, 21st turnover on the night from this Coldwater team. So really struggled against the pressure of this Minster team. And opportunity here for Bar Horse only one for six on the night from the free throw line. Bar Horse free throw is no good. Long rebound out to Lugers, gets it over to Steinke. 15 seconds left to go. Someone's got to try to get open and score. They force it down to Rissmiller. Rissmiller gets this one up, no good. Rebound comes down to Minster. Wenning chases Larger. Three seconds left to go. And that is going to do it. The Minster Wildcats hold off the Coldwater Cavaliers for a big early season conference win. And I think that you have to credit this entire victory to that Wildcat defense. Yeah, absolutely. All night, you could tell that was the strategy coming into the game is we're going to pressure this Coldwater team, not make it easy for them to get it up the floor to their to their playmaker and Riss Miller. And we saw that tonight. It was a team effort. You know, got a couple players in foul trouble early on. You know, but with that deep bench, they just kept bringing in players, continued to pressure. And as you said, it was a team effort tonight to slow down this Cavaliers team. You know, Lily Barhorse, we talked about her several times throughout the game. Really played uh, incredibly on the inside. Ends up with 11 points. The only double-digit score for the Wildcats. But it wasn't the scoring. It was that defense that she played. Yes, uh, you know, yes, Riley got her points. Chris Miller ended up with 20, leading score of the whole game. But if there's such a thing as a quiet 20, that's what Riley had tonight. She got her points, but it was not easy. And Barhorse was there all night long to challenge for rebounds, give extra opportunities. Uh, you know, we mentioned really the only part of her game that struggled tonight was from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, you know, she did a little bit of everything for this team. You know, you like to see those effort plays. How many times was she on the ground tonight diving after those loose balls or sometimes just corralling or touching the ball to one of her teammates so they get a rebound, you know, to gain those possessions. But she, as you said, she did a little bit of everything, forced Riss Miller to earn everything that she got, you know, Big size advantage there, three, four, five inches um, between those two. But, you know, she made it difficult for Riss Miller all day. And, you know, like you said, the only player in double digits. But, you know, she was definitely the workhorse for this Wildcats team. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Minster High School. As the Minster Wildcats move to 2-1 and one on the young season, 1-0 and oh in conference play. As the Coldwater Cavaliers fall to 1-2 and 0-1 and oh and one in conference action. I'd like to thank our crew working behind the cameras back at the studio doing a great job as always. We appreciate 
everything that you guys do for us, making us sound so good night in and night out. Also like to thank our sponsor, Wabash Mutual Telephone, being our scoreboard sponsor tonight. We appreciate you. One final time for Minster High School. Minster Wildcats knock off the Coldwater Cavaliers 43-39. For Jaya Stover, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.